Okay, so welcome everyone to the Bangalore Probability Seminar. So this is uh, going to be the last seminar for the semester. We'll probably assume in August or sometime, we'll say later. Uh, so, uh, so one of the things is the slides are already up on the usual website. So Yogesh has posted it in the chat. If you don't know the Bangalore semi uh, Probability Seminar website, so you can see that. And questions, you can either send it on chat or unmute and ask. Uh, either way is fine. Uh, okay, so anyway, so we are very happy to have Gohan Thope. Uh, he is now at uh, CSA department in IASC. And uh, he will talk about uh, active infections and disease extinction in the stochastic SIR model. Gohan. Thank you, Manjunath. Uh, can, I, uh, can one of you please confirm if I'm audible? Yes, yes, you're clearly audible. Thank you. And uh, I'm not able to see the video. So uh, if some of you raise, raise your hand or anything uh, to ask questions, I may not be able to uh, know. So uh, please uh, either, uh, you know, uh, use audio to let me know that someone has a question. All right. So with this, let me begin. So uh, uh, thanks, Manjunath, and thanks, Yogeshwaran, for uh, giving me this opportunity. Uh, so today, I'll be speaking on active infections and disease extinction in the stochastic SIR model. So this is a, a joint work with uh, Gal Dalal from NVIDIA Israel and Bala Shoreni from Yahoo Research uh, in New York. Right. <clears throat> All right, so let me begin by uh, uh, giving a cheat sheet or a one slide summary of what we have done. Okay, so I'm sure many of you already know, but SR models are useful for studying spread of infections, right? And our work uh, basically concerns a discrete time stochastic uh, 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 SIR model. And we focus on two things. The first of this is active infections, and the second is disease extinction time, right? So active infections, uh, uh, I'm sure everyone knows, but just to make sure uh, there is no confusion, refers to uh, the number of confirmed cases minus recoveries, okay? Fortunately, in the SR model, okay, uh, there are no deaths, so uh, we don't have to talk about deaths. So the number of uh, active cases is just the number of confirmed cases minus recoveries. And disease extinction time is basically the time at which uh, uh, the active infections become zero. Right. Uh, basically, we are all hoping that, uh, you know, in the current situation, we reach this time soon. Right. So, uh, uh, so compared to uh, previous works, our analysis, we believe to the best of our knowledge is fundamentally different. And it makes use of a, 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 a novel sequence of stopping times. Right. And, uh, 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 you know, if we want to summarize what our results are, well, we have some bounds for active infections and disease extinction in this discrete time stochastic SR model. And we also have some estimate for the expected value of uh, uh, the largest epidemic size. So uh, if time permits, I will sort of talk about the second, but uh, broadly speaking, I'll focus on the first one. All right, so let me begin with some uh, uh, background. Okay, so the SR model, uh, okay, has uh, three labels, S, I, and R. S stands for susceptible, I stands for infected, and R stands for recovered. The SR model is an example of a compartment model. Okay, so uh, 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 what does a compartment model mean? Well, uh, you have a, a population and you divide this population into different compartments. For example, in this SR model, you divide this uh, population into three compartments, starting with S, I, and R. Okay, so, uh, uh, so basically you will have a bunch of individuals here, you will have a bunch of individuals here, and similarly you will have a bunch of individuals here. And to begin with, we will assume that uh, the number of individuals in this compartment is zero. Okay, so the number of compartments in this uh, number of individuals in uh, the last compartment is zero, right? So uh, uh, we have a, a bunch of uh, individuals in this compartment, right? So this is the uh, number of susceptible people that we begin with, and uh, the number of individuals here are the initially infected people, right? And uh, 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 in a compartment model, the arrows basically denote how the status of an individual changes. So in, for example, in the SR model, uh, 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 a person starts uh, from the susceptible state, then he may get infected. So he may move over here, right? And uh, uh, once he's infected, there may be uh, some non-trivial time after which he recovers, right? Uh, so once he recovers, we assume that uh, uh, the disease cannot affect him, right? So that's why there are no arrows that come out of uh, uh, this last compartment. Is this okay? And there are two parameters over here, lambda and gamma. Okay, these control basically how the disease evolves, right? So you have a bunch of individuals here, right? Uh, at different points in time, some of them may become infected, 
and uh, at different points in time some of the infected individuals may recover so in this way you can see that the size of uh, 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 each compartment changes with time right so this sir on one hand will refer to labels right on the other hand they will also refer to the size of each compartment right and uh, uh, the context will make it clear whether i'm talking uh, whether i'm using s to refer to the label of a compartment or whether i'm using it to refer to the size of the compartment is this okay now uh, if you sort of uh, 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 scan the literature you will see that broadly speaking there are two categories of sr models uh, the first is deterministic and the second is stochastic all right so uh, the deterministic sr models <coughs> began with the work of Carmack and McKendrick in the year 1927 apparently they were uh, studying uh, uh, you know uh, the impact of plague in bombay right so uh, apparently there was some plague uh, a few uh, uh, you know several times over the past uh, two decades before 1927 uh, they were basically studying it right and uh, this deterministic sr model is basically good or uh, uh, you know one can basically make use of this model to analyze the spread of epidemics if the following assumptions are true first is that the community for which we are studying the spread of uh, uh, infections is more or less homogeneous right <coughs> so every individual is like any other individual and uh, we also uh, assume that people mix uniformly is this okay so uh, when i say people i don't mean people just in one compartment okay so this person can meet a person over here this person can meet a person over here uh, a person in s and r can meet and so also uh, persons in sns and i and i and so on can meet right <coughs> so basically two individuals uh, 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 you know can uniformly interact with each other right and the deterministic sr models uh, are uh, typically described by ordinary differential equations uh, uh, for example of the kind that is given over here right so here you can see you have s dot of t so this basically tells how the uh, uh, the size of uh, the number of uh, size of uh, the susceptible compartment changes with time right and uh, how it depends on uh, uh, the current number of susceptible people and the number of infected people and there is some n over here which refers to a fixed population size right <coughs> and similarly you have a, a differential equation that basically talks about how the number of infected people change with time and finally you have a, a, a differential equation that talks about the number of recovered people okay now uh, 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 in sr models okay uh, especially of the kind that we'll be discussing in this uh, uh, work okay we will assume that s plus i plus r is n okay so basically it means that for the period that we are studying there are no births or no deaths right so the population size does not change and we can also assume that there are no uh, 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 my, uh, you know in migration and out migrations right so we can assume all those things so because of which the population size of the community always remains fixed at n so because of this reason once you know the differential equation of s and r i you can uh, immediately figure out what is the differential equation that uh, uh, concerns r okay so in that sense uh, uh, you know uh, specifying this uh, last equation is redundant all right okay so if you sort of uh, uh, scan through the uh, uh, literature on deterministic sr models okay so this is what we found okay so when we began this work we sort of tried reading through a bunch of papers okay and this is what we found so notice that this sr model okay was uh, uh, proposed almost a, a century back and observe that these models are also at least to define they look uh, uh, quite uh, easy right uh, uh, so there are simple models but uh, uh, even after uh, uh, almost a century okay we have uh, 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 you know there are no analytical estimates for active information active infections right so in this model i of t basically tells us the number of infections at time t which is precisely uh, 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 you know the number of active infections and there are no analytical estimates okay so there are some recursive equations that are available uh, uh, especially there was a popular recursive formula given in the year 2014 right and uh, but nevertheless uh, there are no explicit uh, expressions so uh, the only way that uh, at least i am aware of that people used to figure out some estimates for i of t is using some numerical uh, approximations right and the other major issue with these uh, deterministic sr models is that uh, uh, in these models the the disease will never terminate in finite time right so this will uh, the disease will never terminate in finite time 
so in other words only as t tends to infinity will uh, 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 i of t become zero okay so that is a, 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 a property of differential equations right like for example if you look at the differential equation uh, uh, you know i dot of t equals let's say minus i of t right so this is not this differential equation right however this is a simplification of this so one can sort of see that the solution to this is i of t is i zero e to the power minus lambda t right so uh, 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 so uh, in this case you can see that only as t tends to infinity that is limit uh, t tending to infinity i of t is zero right so even in this simple model you can uh, uh, see that uh, uh, i of t goes to zero only as t tends to infinity right and the disease terminates only when i of t becomes zero so because of this reason one can conclude that in uh, 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 deterministic sr models the disease cannot terminate in finite time Okay, so if we were interested in uh, uh, you know answering questions related to early uh, disease termination, okay, one cannot work with uh, uh, deterministic SR models. All right. Okay. Uh, just a question, Mohan. Uh, yes, so, sure. Uh, so there, I mean, so the I mean, from the equation, it's clear. So, so nobody ever gets infected twice. That is the assumption in all SIR models. Is that so? Here, so there is people never yes. increases, right? So there is one model called as SIS. Right. So where what happens is you start with S, you go on to I, and uh, then you sort of become susceptible again. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> so in this model, you can get infected more than once. However, in the SIR model, uh, you cannot in get infected more than once. Okay. And also about this uh, uh, infection time. So this <laughs> differential equation is under assumption that when that makes sense when S I. Are, are all like uh, proportional to n, perhaps. So, uh, so uh, really, why do you say that? Uh, is that not so? I mean, this that uh, is not so. Uh, I mean, there is a version of the differential equation where uh, you know uh, the uh, we look at the fraction of population that is susceptible. There is a fraction of individuals which are infected, right? So, in that model, you will not have this division by n. Instead, your s will basically correspond to the fraction of individuals. Uh, who are uh, susceptible? Uh, so, a uh, fraction of individuals who are susceptible, right? Uh -huh. So, there is a different model, but this model, you know, can take care of, uh, 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 you know, uh, when S is like, for example, one, two, or something like that. Okay. Okay. Uh, but there is an analogous model where we are interested in fractions. Okay. Is that okay? All right. So, means. All right. So a natural question to ask is, okay, we have this deterministic models and we have some numerical approximations. So when are these uh, deterministic models insufficient, right? So uh, uh, we were able to figure out there are like four broad uh, uh, situations when, uh, uh, you know, the deterministic models are insufficient. Okay. So <coughs> first is uh, when we are inter when there is some inherent uncertainty in the epidemic. For example, let's say the uh, community for which we want to study the spread of diseases is small. Right, like for example, in a school. Right, so here there is uncertainty because each time you run this experiment, the number of infected uh, people would be different. Right, so uh, in this uh, sense, you can see that there is some inherent uncertainty, and uh, clearly in such a situation, a, de a deterministic model may not be suitable. Right, so the other situation is when uh, uh, the epidemic fails to start. Right, so uh, uh, imagine that you have a large community, but the outbreak is initiated by few individuals. Right, so uh, uh, in the worst case, imagine there is only one infected person. Right, and by some sheer luck, maybe be before he spread that infection to someone else, he recovered. Right, so in that sense, uh, uh, you know, the epidemic just failed to start, and such a situation can never occur in uh, 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 deterministic ordinary differential equations. Is this okay? And uh, the third situation is, uh, uh, you know, when we have some noisy data, right? Uh, uh, in your measurements, uh, 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 like for example, you know, you really don't know how many people are infected, right? Especially in the beginning, okay? The number of uh, 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 individuals who are infected, this number is very difficult to determine. Okay, the reason is that you are only going to, you know, test a small set of individuals, right? And uh, from there, figure out how many people are infected and not. But there will be a, a bunch of other individuals 
who would not have been tested and consequently you don't know whether they are infected or not so in that sense you can see that there is some uh, noise in uh, the data right uh, because of some missing measurements and also you know there are some standard errors right so because of this one uh, has some noisy data right so again in this situation one cannot work with the uh, 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 you know uh, the deterministic uh, models for SIR, and the last uh, situation is, as I mentioned before, of uh, is that of early disease extinction, right? Uh, uh, so even though you may have a large community and maybe the disease is uh, started by uh, uh, several individuals, right? So even if uh, uh, that is the case, right, it is possible that maybe even though you know some thousands of people may have been uh, infected, right? Uh, uh, there is a, a positive probability that you know before they infect someone else. Uh, you know, they sort of recover, all these thousand guys recover, right? And uh, there are other possibilities also in which the disease, uh, uh, you know, uh, becomes extinct uh, very early, right? So uh, if you are interested in asking questions of this nature, again, the deterministic ODE models are of uh, uh, not of interest. All right. Okay, so the alternative to these uh, uh, deterministic uh, uh, SIR models are stochastic SIR models. Okay, so typically in literature, they are described by uh, uh, using either discrete or continuous time Markov chains or stochastic differential equations. Okay, so uh, 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 again, these stochastic differential equations, you know, are complicated to figure out what the solution, I mean, it is difficult to figure out what the solutions are. And uh, in this work, we will focus on, uh, 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 you know, SR models that are described by discrete or continuous time Markov chains. Right. And uh, uh, the issue, so I will sort of give the description of these models later because we will be working with these models. So let me just tell you uh, uh, the issue that we found, uh, uh, you know, with uh, uh, the current approaches to analyzing these Markov chain models. Okay. So uh, uh, we noticed that, uh, you know, the analysis is quite complicated. Okay. This is uh, our opinion. And uh, the reason for this is that, uh, you know, if you sort of look at these analysis, they sort of use uh, multiple approximations for different stages of the process, right? Uh, like for example, uh, uh, you know, in the early stage, right, uh, uh, you may assume that the number of susceptible population does not change, right? So since it does not change, it can be treated as a constant, right? And uh, consequently, the model somehow significantly simplifies and uh, uh, one can then view this uh, uh, stochastic SR model as a branching process, right? So, and one can use uh, existing results on branching processes, uh, uh, you know, to say something about these uh, uh, discrete uh, or, uh, uh, you know, stochastic SR models in the initial phase, right? So that is something that can be done. And alternatively, what people do is, uh, uh, you know, in the middle phase, right? When there are like, uh, 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 you know, uh, several individuals who are infected, they sort of say that, you know, in this phase, uh, you can basically use the ordinary differential equation because there are too many uh, individuals who are infected and, you know, that can be, uh, 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 you know, modeled uh, quite closely by this uh, deterministic ODE. And then again, in the final stage, uh, uh, you know, if I have uh, understood correctly, they again make use of a branching process. So this is like uh, one recipe. I'm not saying all of them use that, but uh, most of the analysis that we came across, they often had such approximations. Is this okay? Um, so now uh, uh, let me sort of uh, introduce our model and uh, how we, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, analyze this model. And finally, I'll talk about our results. All right. <coughs> okay. So our model is uh, uh, basically a, a stochastic uh, uh, SR model. And we begin with, uh, 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 you know, uh, its description in the continuous time setup. Okay, so this model was introduced by Bartlett in uh, 1949. Okay, in this model, we start with a, a fixed population of size n, right? So uh, clearly there are uh, uh, n choose two uh, indi uh, pairs of individuals, right? And uh, uh, basically we want to understand how often they meet. And in this model, what we do is that we sort of uh, uh, assign an independent exponential clock for each pair, right? And each time a clock ticks, the corresponding pair meet. Is that okay? So that's uh, uh, how this mo uh, you know model is described. Okay. So in this sense, uh, so let's say you have these uh, individuals uh, one, two, three, all the way up till n, right? So let's say you fix this individual. Uh, let's say this guy, right? And you want to ask what is the mean waiting time before this individual one meets uh, 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 another individual, right? From amongst the remaining n minus one guys. So there are n minus one guys here. So we are interested in knowing what is the mean waiting time before individual i, that is some fixed individual. And in this case, it is individual one meets another person, 
right so uh, it is basically the minimum of uh, these uh, uh, you know n minus 1 uh, exponential clocks right and uh, uh, the minimum of uh, exponential random variables is another exponential random variable whose uh, uh, parameter is basically the sum of these parameters so consequently uh, uh, the mean waiting time before a fixed individual meets any other individual is Uh, exponential with parameter lambda, and consequently, from this one can figure out that the mean waiting time uh, 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 before a fixed individual meets another individual is one over lambda, right? And separately, uh, uh, we will also assume that an infected person recovers in uh, uh, in exponential of gamma time, right? So again, exponential of gamma is a random variable with uh, it is an exponential random variable with parameter gamma. right and he recovers uh, in this much amount of time and this random variable is independent of everything else right and uh, a quantity of interest uh, 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 you know this uh, in all sr models is this basic re reproduction number which is denoted as r not okay so the r not uh, uh, okay formally is given by lambda over gamma where lambda is this and gamma is this okay and one can uh, see that this is basically uh, 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 equal to uh, uh, the mean recovery time by mean waiting time is this okay so uh, this is what this uh, uh, basic reproduction number is all right okay so uh, as i said before we don't work with the continuous time uh, model instead we work with a discrete time model uh, uh, that is based on this continuous time model okay so uh, uh, clearly uh, you know Uh, so here in this model in this continuous time model we assume that whenever an infected person meets a susceptible person the susceptible person will get infected on the other hand when a susceptible person meets a susceptible person nothing happens and similarly when an infected person meets an infected person or a recovered person nothing happens right so uh, uh, under these assumptions right uh, uh, we sort of uh, 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 you know look at the discrete time uh, stochastic sr model obtained by only looking at Uh, the values of uh, the susceptibles infected and recovered at the time of jumps in the uh, uh, continuous time process right so uh, uh, clearly uh, uh, when a uh, uh, susceptible and an infected person meet the number of susceptibles will fall by one right and the number of uh, infected will increase by one right so at the time of Uh, 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 at the time when such a jump occurs or alternatively there is a, uh, another possible way in which a jump in this continuous time process can occur that is when an infected individual recovers right so in that case the number of infected individual falls by one whereas the number of recovered uh, individuals increases by one so there are these uh, two jumps that can happen in this continuous time process so if you only look at what happens at these uh, jump times right we get this uh, 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 discrete time stochastic sr model right so at jump t right uh, uh, whatever is the value of uh, the number of susceptibles we denoted by st uh, it denotes the number of infected individuals and rt denotes the number of uh, uh, recovered individuals right and uh, 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 the model uh, or the way this uh, uh, model evolves right so uh, 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 uh basically you can calculate these probabilities from this continuous time stochastic sr model right uh, and uh, you can figure out that this is how this model evolves so once it becomes zero okay uh, 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 the number of uh, uh, infected individuals at time t plus 1 will also be zero and the number of susceptibles and the number of recovered will not change right so this condition implies that uh, you know the process has more or less stopped evolving right i should not say more or less uh, uh, the process has indeed stopped evolving on the other hand it is possible that it is bigger than zero right so this is the number of infected individuals at time t uh, so i should when i say time t i mean the discrete time and it refers to the uh, th jump in the continuous process right so if you assume that it is zero then conditioned on the value of st it and rt right uh, 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 this is how the process will evolve right so if uh, these are the values of st it and rt at time t then the value at time t plus 1 could either be this or this okay so uh, remember that i said there are only two ways in which uh, we can have jumps the first is when a, a, a susceptible person gets infected that's why you see there is a minus 1 here and a plus 1 here whereas rt remains unchanged or the other way in which we could have a jump is when the uh, one infected individual actually recovers is that okay so uh, here you can see that the number of infected individual uh, falls by one whereas the number of recovered individuals increases by one right and one can see that uh, uh, from the previous model one can see that uh, you know this uh, 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 occurs uh, this outcome occurs with the probability equal to this and uh, 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 this latter occurs with the uh, uh, probability equal to 1 minus of this 
right? And you can see that uh, 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 that expression is given like this, right? And uh, uh, one thing you have to observe over here is that these probabilities do not depend on it. Is this okay? They only depend on st. Okay, so that is uh, one observation that we should keep in mind. All right. Okay, so uh, uh, now uh, let me sort of basically tell you how we go about uh, uh, you know analyzing. Uh, uh, this model. Is that okay? Uh, Rohan, there is a question, I think. I don't know if I missed it earlier. Uh, sure. So, sure. Can you ask, uh, who was it? Uh, somebody raised their hand. This is L. Singhal. I asked the person to unmute and ask. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, maybe there is no question. Okay, continue, Rohan. Sure. Okay, so. So let me sort of give a brief overview of uh, uh, what our key idea is, right? So recall that our goal was to figure out, uh, 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 you know, uh, some bounds for these active infections and uh, uh, this uh, uh, disease extinction time, right? Uh, so all of that is based on the value of IT. So what we do is that we do not try to directly estimate the value of IT for uh, any value of T. Right. I think people have tried previously that and uh, we believe that that's the reason, uh, you know, people have uh, uh, found this uh, uh, problem very hard to look at. Okay, so what we instead do is we propose a new sequence of stopping times, which we denote as tau, uh, Ti, right, and we focus on the values of Iti. And uh, uh, we notice that, you know, studying this quantity is, uh, uh, you know, much easy, much easier than, you know, trying to figure out what the value of It is for all values of T. Is that okay? So now uh, uh, let me sort of briefly define uh, what these stopping times are, right? So there are two stopping times that we introduce. One is the sequence of Ti, and additionally, we also define this uh, uh, Tmax stopping time, right? So Tmax is very easy to define. Well, it's the first time at which it becomes zero, okay? So again, I would like to highlight that uh, the T over here, okay, uh, is uh, uh, referring to uh, uh, discrete times. Uh, and uh, they correspond to jumps in this continuous process. Okay, they correspond to jumps in the continuous process. All right. Okay, so uh, uh, T max over here basically uh, 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 refers to the time at which the number of uh, uh, infections become zero. So indeed, at T max, the disease has died out. Right, so uh, that's what T max is, and then we define this sequence of uh, uh, stopping times T i, uh, uh, beginning with T zero equals zero, and T i is basically the uh, 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 smallest time at which the number of susceptibles falls by i. Is this okay? So S zero over here refers to the number of uh, 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 initial susceptibles, and S t over here basically refers to the number of susceptibles at time t. Right, so uh, Ti is basically the time at which the number of susceptibles falls by i uh, 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 in comparison to the number of initial susceptibles. Right, and uh, 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 this is basically the stopping times that we work with. However, uh, these stopping times are not easy to work with directly. The reason is that uh, 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 you know because we are working with uh, uh, stochastic SR models, it is possible that uh, uh, Ti is infinity. Right, so it is possible that Ti is uh, infinity. Right, uh, because uh, you know maybe the uh, number of susceptibles never fell by i, uh, and uh, uh, instead uh, you know uh, 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 all infected people recover. Right, so that could happen. So the disease ended before the number of susceptibles could fall by i. Right, so because of this reason, it is possible that uh, uh, T i could equal infinity. Right, so to sort of not uh, 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 you know to avoid dealing with this scenario, okay, what we do is we define an alternative stopping time. Which is basically the minimum of Ti and Tmax, right? So uh, uh, since we are working with uh, a finite population, right, n can be whatever we want, and since we are working with a finite population, right, uh, uh, Tmax will always be finite, right? Uh, uh, and uh, because of this reason, uh, one can see that tau i is less than infinity, almost sure. All right. So now the question uh, one can ask is, okay, we have defined these stopping times. So what's so uh, uh, good about these stopping times and how can we uh, use these stopping times, right? Uh, uh, so uh, uh, okay, so how can we use these stopping times, right? Uh, uh, the answer to that uh, is that, uh, you know, uh, uh, so let me first give you the answer and basically then describe uh, why the, the answer is correct. Okay, so if you sort of look at the number of recoveries between 
tau i and tau i plus one. Okay, so uh, if you look at the number of recoveries between this, then this can be approximated by a truncated geometric random variable. Okay, with uh, a suitably defined parameter. Right, so uh, 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 one can ask, oh, why is there a truncation? Well, the answer to this is that uh, 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 there is a truncation because uh, uh, the number of recoveries cannot exceed the number of infected people that we began with. Right, so because of this reason, we need truncation. However, other than that, uh, 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 the nice thing is that between these uh, uh, stopping times, uh, tau i and tau i plus one, the number of recoveries is a truncated geometric random variable. Is this okay? And uh, in some sense, uh, uh, this sort of uh, uh, makes the analysis simple because then we can sort of use existing analysis of geometric random variables to basically say something about, uh, uh, you know, uh, the number of infections and so on and so forth. All right. Okay, so let me just uh, have a look at uh, the time. Okay, so since I'm running out of time, uh, uh, maybe I'll uh, not go into the slide uh, uh, in much detail. However, I'll just uh, say the following, right? Uh, 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 so, uh, uh, tau i is the time when the, uh, 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 so let's assume that i tau i is bigger than zero, right? So i tau i bigger than zero means that the, uh, 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 the infection has not ended, the disease has not ended, right? So between tau i and tau i plus one, right? So at uh, uh, time tau i, okay, the value of uh, 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 the uh, number of susceptibles is S0 minus i, Right. And uh, uh, between tau i and tau i plus one, basically one and one, only one of the following can occur. OK, so basically uh, 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 there are a bunch of recoveries followed by an infection. Right. So notice that as soon as you have an infection, the number of susceptibles will fall by one. Right. And uh, in that sense, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, this, uh, 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 you know, the stopping time would have occurred. Is that right? The stopping criterion for tau i plus one would have occurred and consequently, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, our observation window, okay, would have ended, right? So uh, 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 alternatively, what can happen is that uh, between tau i and tau i plus one, all the i tau i infected people recover. Is this okay? So uh, these are the two possibilities that can happen between tau i and tau i plus one. Uh, uh, maybe there is a bunch of recoveries Okay, and followed by an infection. So this means that, uh, uh, you know, the criterion for TI plus one was uh, satisfied, right? Or alternatively, uh, you basically uh, uh, have that all the I tau I, I tau I infected people recover, okay, which basically means that the criterion for T max is satisfied, right? And uh, uh, since tau I plus one is basically a minimum between this and this, the criterion for tau I plus one uh, 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 is also satisfied. Is this okay? So it's easy to see that between tau i and tau i plus one, only uh, uh, one and only one of the uh, two things can occur, right? And the uh, most important thing to note is that whenever we have a recovery, okay? So recovery recall means that one of the infected person recovers, okay? So this does not change the value of ST. Is that okay? So in particular, for any uh, uh, value of uh, T between tau i and tau i plus one, Right. Uh, uh, whenever we have a recovery, the value of ST does not change from S0 minus I. This is what we started out with. Right. So uh, uh, I hope you agree with me that since the value of ST does not change, this would simplify the analysis significantly. Right. And uh, uh, in particular, only the value uh, of IT changes between tau I and tau I plus one. And recall that uh, when I had sort of described this uh, discrete time stochastic SIR model, I had mentioned that uh, uh, the probabilities of evolution do not depend on the value of I. They only depend on the value of S and the value of S is a constant between these two times. Right. And consequently, the analysis becomes quite simple. Is that okay? So I hope uh, this hand wavy argument sort of uh, 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 conveys the message that, you know, uh, uh, introducing these stopping times is indeed very beneficial. Okay. And uh, uh, this sort of makes uh, the analysis significantly easy. All right. Okay. So now, uh, uh, you know, let me sort of try and, uh, uh, you know, present our results. Okay. So uh, we have basically four results and I'll try to uh, go over them one by one. And in the remaining time that is there, I'll try and sort of uh, 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 give a sketch of the uh, uh, proof uh, technique, of our proof technique. All right. Okay, so the first result basically concerns the active number, expected number of active infections, right? So observe that uh, our result does not look at IT. Instead, it looks at the value of I tau T. 
is this okay so as i mentioned in the beginning instead of trying to find what the expected value of it is directly okay one can uh, uh, you know uh, uh, first try to figure out what the value of i tau t is and then there is some relation between it and uh, 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 i uh, 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 you know um, so there is some relation between uh, a suitably defined i and uh, it i tau i and i tau i plus 1 right so uh, once we understand the behavior of uh, uh, this i tau i right so once we understand the behavior of these i tau i one can then try to uh, get some bounds on the behavior of this it itself all right so uh, let me go back to our result so the first result is basically the expected value of i tau t minus i0 so the first thing to note here is that uh, uh, this is an uh, 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 equal to signs okay so this is not an approximation this is an exact expression right and in this exact expression uh, you know you have uh, 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 some of these quantities right so these quantities over here depend on i right and uh, the number of uh, uh, infected individuals and then this is multiplied by probability of ti plus 1 less than t max okay so this probability over here concerns uh, uh, the event that uh, uh, number of susceptibles falls by i plus 1 before the process ends okay so that's what uh, uh, this event uh, uh, talks about right uh, so you can see that uh, uh, we have managed to obtain a formula for this uh, 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 expected number of active infections in terms of these probabilities so what now remains is uh, is there some way to figure out uh, uh, an estimate for these quantities right so uh, that's what we will try to do in the <coughs> next slide okay and <coughs> we refer to this as the early termination bounds okay so as i mentioned uh, uh, this uh, uh, can be viewed as early termination bounds because this event over here basically looks at uh, the probability that the number of susceptibles falls by i plus 1 before the process ends right so in that sense one can view this as early termination bounds right Uh, so we have uh, like uh, 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 two bounds uh, for this uh, uh, probability. Okay, so the first bound is applicable when we start with uh, uh, i zero equals one. Okay, so this is ongoing work, and we believe that uh, this result can actually be generalized to the case of i zero equals k as well. But to begin with, we will assume that i zero is one, right? And uh, we try to derive an estimate for what uh, 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 this probability is. right uh, so we define this uh, uh, constant zeta over here which depends on this uh, uh, basic reproduction number r not in the following way <coughs> and uh, we require that uh, i be uh, uh, less than uh, uh, some constant times uh, uh, n over 2 right uh, so notice that uh, r i can actually go all the way up till uh, 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 you know n over 2 right or uh, close to n over 2 but uh, if you sort of look at these branching process approximations and things like that those approximations are only uh, good enough up to root n right little o of root n for i uh, equal to little o of root n right so uh, uh, because of uh, uh, this reason one can see that our results can actually uh, you know uh, go beyond a, a simple branching process approximation for the initial stage all right okay so uh, the uh, the first of our result says that if you look at the uh, probability that ti is greater than t max then uh, uh, you know just by looking at uh, uh, the event that the um, Uh, uh, the disease dies out in the first instance so observe that uh, i0 is 1 right so if this person recovers <coughs> then uh, you know the disease basically ends right and from this event uh, 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 you know the probability of this event which is precisely zeta one can see that uh, this uh, inequality basically holds so this is a lower bound and then we basically try to ask uh, can we obtain uh, uh, an upper bound for this uh, probability that uh, somehow matches is this right <coughs> so uh, in the proof we actually came across some uh, complicated expressions and to uh, sort of approximate those expressions we had to sort of uh, uh, make use of some assumptions right and uh, uh, the first assumption was that if this uh, uh, ratio gamma over gamma plus lambda which is basically uh, uh, 
uh, 1 over r not plus 1 right if uh, uh, this quantity over here if it is less than this number right so this is an artifact of an analysis and i don't think uh, this is uh, in some sense related to the uh, discrete stochastic sr process right so uh, if such a condition is satisfied then one can show that uh, uh, for i which satisfies this condition this probability is upper bounded by uh, uh, 2.9 uh, uh, zeta is that okay and similarly uh, Uh, if uh, such a condition is satisfied, then one can show that in the limb soup, uh, this probability is upper bounded by 1.38 zeta. So one can see that this expression and this expression is very close, right? So in that sense, we believe that uh, we have a more or less uh, tight uh, upper and lower bound. Is this okay? <coughs> so uh, uh, this is one of the results, right? So uh, one of the things that I wanted to uh, uh, make sure was that these numbers over here, okay, are indeed, uh, 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 you know, not very arbitrary and they are useful in applications. And I want to sort of justify, right? Like in this uh, current COVID situation, okay, uh, 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 at least uh, as far the, uh, as the reports that I have read, okay, it looks like the mean recovery period is like 14 days, like two weeks, right? And from this one can see that gamma is roughly like uh, 0 0.071. And uh, if we uh, sort of assume that lambda is two, which means that the mean time for one person to meet a, a, another person is 0.5 so basically uh, you meet two persons in a day right uh, so in, uh, because of that uh, uh, lambda is 2 so one can see that this value of zeta is actually 0 0.34 uh, 0 0.34 okay which is uh, well within these upper bounds is that okay <coughs> And uh, one thing I would like to point out is that uh, these bounds notice that they do not depend on i is this okay? And uh, a quick answer to that is that we actually obtain a summation which actually depends on i, and then we sort of uh, 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 approximate that summation with a suitable geometric series, and uh, that geometric series then no longer uh, 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 depends on the value of i, and consequently these estimates also do not depend on i. All right. Okay, so then we also have uh, one more result, okay, uh, uh, relating to uh, early termination. Okay, so uh, this basically concerns the case when the value of I0 uh, is bigger than one. Okay, in particular, I0 is very large, right? How large I will sort of explain in the next slide. Okay, so here we require that uh, this R0 be greater than or equal to four and uh, uh, this condition be satisfied that the that is the value of I and I0 be approximately N over two, then one can show that probability Ti greater than T max is uh, basically upper bounded by uh, some constant times e to the power minus c2 i0. Okay, so clearly if i0 is very large, right, uh, uh, this quantity is very small, right, and we have some formulas for these constants, right. However, uh, uh, one can ask, okay, can I then choose a very large value of i0? Uh, well, you can choose a large value of i0, but then, uh, you know, our results only ap applies for a small set of i's, right, like for example, if i0 is chosen almost as large as this, then maybe the only possible value of i that you can use in our bound is zero. Right. However, uh, uh, you know, if you choose I not to be, let's say, root n and uh, I uh, roughly of the same order or bigger than root n or I not is, uh, let's say, little o of n, maybe like n to the power three over four and so on. Okay. So in all such situations, our uh, bounds will indeed be useful. Okay. So uh, uh, a quick su uh, summary, uh, the difference between this expression and the other expression is that uh, here the result actually holds for uh, <coughs> I not uh, 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 equals one. Right. Uh, 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 whereas here, uh, this holds for any i naught. However, this expression on the right, okay, is less than one only for i naught bigger than fifty two. Okay, and one more thing that we would like to point out is that uh, 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 again, this bound does not depend on little i. Is that okay? Again, we sort of use a similar idea. We have like a, a sum, sum that depends on i, and uh, uh, you know, we sort of replace that finite sum with an infinite uh, geometric series, and you know, basically get this bound. And because of this reason, okay, these uh, bounds don't depend on i. All right. Okay. So uh, the most important theorem. Okay. I think I'm almost at the end of the time, but uh, uh, this is our most important theorem. Okay. So uh, uh, let's assume that R naught is bigger than four, and again I and I naught satisfy such a condition, right? <coughs> and let uh, uh, E i be an event of the following form, right? Uh, uh, so I will explain what these mu i's are. But uh, let's say E i is of the following form, and let's assume that this event E i is a subset of this. Right. So if uh, such an event occurs, 
then the probability that the uh, uh, number of infections at tau, tau i plus 1 does not belong to EI is upper bounded by uh, uh, this expression over here. So in that sense, you can see that we have uh, uh, some probabilistic bounds for the number of active infections. Again, this bound holds for any I naught bigger than equal to 1. Right, so uh, this basically tells us some concentration bound for the number of infections at time tau i plus one. Right, so uh, we obtain some bound like this. Right, uh, so one can ask why did we choose uh, or require that this event e i be a subset of this event? Well, uh, 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 this is to ensure that the process has not ended. Right, uh, uh, and uh, uh, if uh, this condition is true, then this implies that the process has not ended at time tau i plus one. And if this is true, that is, if the process has not ended at tau i plus one, then it automatically implies that the process must not have ended at earlier stopping times as well. Right. So uh, uh, what I'll do is maybe I'll take a, a few more minutes and just give the uh, a broad idea of the proof of this last concentration bound. Right. So uh, let me sort of try and do that. Okay, so as I mentioned, the uh, 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 this main advantage of these stopping times tau i and tau i plus one is that the number of recoveries uh, uh, between these stopping times, okay, uh, 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 can be shown to be a truncated geometric random variable, right? So in particular, we can show that uh, uh, by making use of a coupling, and uh, if we have some bunch of events e zero to e k, which all satisfy this. Uh, condition that they are all subset of this. As I mentioned before, this condition ensures that the process has not ended, right? Uh, 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 at uh, these uh, uh, time instances tau i, right? So, <coughs> so this uh, choice of event uh, implicitly imposes the condition that the process has not ended, right? And uh, 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 under this implicit uh, condition, one can show that the probability of the intersection of uh, these events is equal to the probability of intersection of these events. However, the expressions uh, on the right, okay, in particular, these uh, HJs that we have, these are basically untruncated geometric random variables okay which have uh, 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 the parameter 1 over qj so hj is uh, uh, a geometric random variable with parameter 1 over qj and more importantly these hjs are independent random variables right so uh, uh, we sort of want to study this quantity however by using coupling and for these special choice of events we can show that this probability can be approximated by this probability however this probability is easy to study in particular uh, uh, there is this work by jansen from the year 2014 which concerns uh, uh, some uh, 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 bounds for sums of geometric rand uh, random variables in particular he obtained some tail estimates uh, uh, you know uh, of uh, differing from uh, the mean of uh, uh, the sum of random variables. Is that okay? So uh, because of this reason, uh, using this uh, result, we can obtain estimates for this and one can then transfer the estimates for uh, the probability of this, right? So like, for example, uh, if you sort of recall the second uh, 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 early termination probability, right? So in particular, we were interested in finding the probability that Tk plus one is less than T max, right? So this basically is e equivalent to the event that the process did not end at any of these time instances, right? So this event uh, satisfies this condition over here. So basically, we can use this condition over here and sort of uh, use a simple union bound and uh, uh, you know show that this probability is basically this probability. However, the probability on the right is uh, related to uh, geometric random variables. So we can use this result and obtain a bound for this. Okay, in the same way, uh, 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 for uh, 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 bounds for active infections, Okay, so in particular, let's say someone gives us this event EI and asks us what's the probability that out tau i plus one minus i tau zero lies in this set EI, right? So in some sense, uh, uh, this is like uh, uh, the range of values that this can take. So uh, this again can be shown to be the probability of uh, 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 this uh, quantity over here, right? Uh, so this is, uh, I mean, using a union bound, you can split the probability of this and the probability of this event. The probability of this event is something we obtained before. And again, this uh, uh, for this, we can make use of the result by Janssen and again, uh, uh, derive some expression for that. Okay, so uh, maybe I have run out of time, right? Uh, uh, so maybe I'll sort of stop here and uh, uh, you know basically talk about some future directions right um, 
so uh, as I said, okay, right now we have this early termination uh, result only for I0 equals uh, 1. We would like to extend it to I0 equals K and then compare it with this other result that we have obtained, right? <coughs> now, uh, uh, one of the first results that I mentioned was this expected value of I tau Y minus I tau 0, right? And this uh, uh, expression was in terms of this probabilities of early termination. And uh, we have some estimates for this, but uh, uh, this is ongoing work and we hope to use these estimates to get some uh, closed form estimates for these things. And uh, uh, finally, uh, right now we only have an estimate for uh, uh, the probability that Ti is less than T max. Uh, we sort of hope to use uh, some of the analysis that we have built to obtain some expected time for disease extinction. Is this okay? Uh, so maybe this is a good time to stop. Uh, uh, thank you. Okay. Thanks, Gohan. Uh, we still uh, can take a few questions if there are any. If anyone has questions, please unmute yourself and ask. Yeah, I go on. I just missed the definition of the stopping time. Can okay, you just go back to tau sub t? Sure. Yes. <coughs> right. So there's another stopping time that uh, that uh, at least from empirical data that I'm observing, which I don't know how to sort of handle. Uh, the infection and the susceptible gets infected at a certain rate, and that rate changes over time because your rates are constant. Yes. Uh, and there's one stopping time kind of critical at which the the thing just suddenly shoots up. The, the, the susceptibles get more and more infected at a very very faster rate than the constant rate they're coming at. Okay. Uh, and that is that is when the when the when the lambda by mu crosses a certain threshold. Okay. Uh, and I'm wondering uh, if if you, have you seen any analysis in the literature on that? Like so when 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 lambda and mu depend on t as well, uh, and susceptibles are changing. And mm -hmm. let's say a fixed stopping time that lambda <coughs> uh, r t is bigger than some let's say 1.3 or 1.1, for example. Have you seen any literature on that? How that stopping time is handled? Um, I'm trying to recall. So there is this uh, survey article by Britain where he actually spoke about how the middle stages are approximated, right? So I'm wondering if, uh, uh, so I have not, uh, so the first answer is that I have not looked at such stopping times. However, I uh, presume if uh, these stopping times and, you know, this approximation by ODs, okay, uh, 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 you know, are in some sense related. Because, yeah, uh, that's right. Uh, that's right. But uh, yeah, right? I understand that. That's like, but unfortunately, those sort of go into the sort of the semi black box as I, as I think of it, because it's right. little a little less understanding of the probabilistic aspects of the model in some sense. Mm -hmm. uh, but is there a is there a? But I don't think I've seen literature in which either. RT is bigger than some threshold, then the the rate kind of changes substantially. The model really changes before it reaches mm -hmm. the the flat peak. So I actually have not uh, uh, yeah. read that, uh, but in our case, I'm just wondering if uh, this uh, R not value uh, can it change, right? So in our case, the value of R not because it depends on gamma and lambda, yeah, right? Yeah. It does not change. So I'm wondering, uh, you know, is there some relevance or is there an equivalent question in our model? If that is the case, maybe I can try and answer from. So as of now, I'm not able to see that, but I'll think a bit about that. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? So I have one. Uh, so basically your analysis was like, I mean, when you went from the, uh, the uh, you took the discrete Markov chain inside the continuous one, but you only taking it at the times when the jumps happen, right? Uh, That's correct. So since the holding times are going to depend in a complicated way on I and S both, uh, Yes. Right. So th this uh, you cannot estimate the time in the continuous model by any of this, right? So it um, is in some way homogenizing that. Uh... So that is true. Uh, but uh, <laughs> in that uh, Janssen paper, he actually has some uh, tail bounds for some of exponential random variables as well. Right. So, uh, uh, you know, we haven't worked it out, but we believe that, you know, this uh, coupling that we have done Right, uh, right now looks at these uh, sums of geometric random variables and the number of recoveries between these two stopping times. I think instead of looking at the number of recoveries, if we uh, uh, sort of look at the time taken between this uh, tau y and tau y plus one, I think 
it can be approximated by sums of uh, 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 you know uh, 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 like truncated uh, sorry sums of exponential random variables or let me put it this way it can be approximated by a truncated sum of exponential random variables okay i believe that can be done uh, however at this point it's just an intuition uh, 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 but it looks like a possible direction to explore yes and if one can do that then one can use again this uh, janssen result to get some bounds uh, okay yeah no i understand what you are saying but uh, this uh, the holding time at each location is different it is a product of s and i and so i mean no but so between the stopping times tau i and tau i plus 1 uh, uh, <coughs> this uh, value of st is does not change right so that's why these stopping times are crucial uh, uh, and it is because of that reason that the analysis simplifies but the number of infections keeps changing right so number of infection keeps changing uh, that is right okay so i will have to think about it but uh, at this point this is the line of thought that we have right is that okay? any other questions uh, okay if not uh, uh, maybe everyone can unmute uh, themselves so we can uh, thank uh, gohan so yeah let me